Everything is remix. Hmm. Good stuff? Horseshit. Good stuff? Horseshit. Maybe we're in a little bit of the middle. Um, but, you know, I do think it's a good starter piece for us to start thinking about it, right? So I, I hope you just got through it. You made some sense of it in your own world, in your own realm of consumption or, or production. Maybe you're a musician, maybe you want to be a filmmaker, maybe you're a photographer, maybe you have your own clothing company, boutique, you know, hype beast brand. Uh, maybe you're an independent inventor or you're a chemistry student or you want to go into bioengineering or you're a farmer or want to be a farmer um, or, what, or whatever, right? Um, and hopefully this sort of sparks some stuff in you, you know. But, I mean... I gotta ask you this, you know, think about this, like, have you ever made a remix? And I think the answer is yes, <laughs> right? At the most basic, like, boring level, you have all written a paper for school where you quoted people or paraphrased someone, right? That is a remix, right? But you've also seen things and you've watched enough movies and listened to enough music that when you go to make your own movies music or you go to take a photograph or whatever, you've been inspired and you copy directly, meaning like, oh, I'm going to you know, make something that sounds like this or make something that looks like this or, or I'm going to just actually take that piece of content and flip it up into my own realm. Um, or, you know, you've been more indirectly influenced. Like, you understand the grammar of filmmaking, you've been trained in it, and like, but that's still like copying what's, and remixing what's been done before you, you know. But I think for, you know, for the most part, we've all done this, you know, and we do it all the time. And I think if we TikTok, or, I mean, produce for TikTok, how many of y'all are content creators? You know what I mean? But if y'all be producing uh, for TikTok or whatever, or like you're doing your little dances and little meme -y things, you know, whatever, right? Like you are remixing stuff, you know? Like that is a, a remix, you know? Um, and we're all doing it with corporate technologies. Things made by Apple, by Microsoft, by Google. Um, we're using their corporate channels. Uh, we're using their bandwidth. You know, um, but like the computer and, and the smartphone, and the smartphone to me is a computer, right? Um, just it fits in your pocket. You know, these technologies have allowed us to do so, so, so much remixing, creation, and as well, you know, infringing, you know, and they're very powerful and it's given us power back, you know, as many ways as consumers, but in some ways it's also like stripped us of power. It's this very like betwixt and between sort of, um, you know, paradox that we, that we live in. But, you know, I don't know. What do you think about a thesis? You know, we start with copying, we transform, and then we combine everything. Is this bull crap? I don't really know. You know, this would be a place where I would ask you, how many of y'all are creators? Or how many of y'all are musicians, right? And it's very simple, right? When you start to play an instrument, you know, my mom made me play the trumpet. I want to play drums, man. My whole life, my mom made me play the damn trumpet. I got a drum set now because I'm grown, but she made me play the trumpet. I was pissed. <laughs> Anyways, you know, you start playing the trumpet. I don't come out, you know, uh, like Miles Davis and just blow my horn. You know what I mean? Like, I start out doing, you know, uh, Twinkle Twinkle Little Star and Marietta Little Lamb and you know, the, the, the basics, right? I, I learned how to play songs, you know, that have been written before. So I am copying, right? And then I get a little more, you know, ep, like adept at music creation. And then I start to like take those Marietta Little Lamb and I start to tweak the melody. I start to rearrange it. I start to put it into my own meaning, right? And then I kind of like take all those techniques that I've, you know, learned over time, this music I've learned over time, the way that I've transformed it and rearranged it and like rethought it in my mind or riffed on it in my mind and then I'm combining all that in the end and that's where we get the remix. Now that may not be everything but you think about art, right? If y'all are draw or paint, you know, you don't just come out, well, you don't necessarily just come out the bat like being able to draw like or paint like crazy, right? You start to start, right, when we're kids we start to color, we start to fill in the lines and then maybe we trace stuff so we're copying and doing real basic stuff and then we're, oh, well, I really like Godzilla and I start to draw my own Godzillas and, you know, wh whatever. And then like eventually through time, through all those processes, we're starting to make our own stuff but we're still influenced by what we consume. We can never escape, escape our consumption, right? And media and everything is so ubiquitous, especially in the smartphone age. We're connected, 
you know, things go viral in an, in overnight and a fad that's dope today is whack tomorrow. Whereas when I was growing up in the 80s, you know, uh, and before, you know, virality or virility, whatever you want to call it, was a slow process. We were disconnected. Um, you know, things could happen in New York City, like hip hop music, right? Hip hop music and culture started in the 70s in New York City. And it didn't leave the city for like, like prominently for like seven years. Um, you, know, you know what I'm saying? Like that's New York City. Like no one noticed what was going on. That's how slow pace was and slow connectivity was, right? Um, and obviously we're globally connected. So, you know, so many things happen so, so fast and they spread so fast and the memes spread fast. But, you know, Kirby talks about this, you know, like for the longest time, everything we made was the property of the public, right? Like before capitalism, we just made shit because, yeah, we needed fire, yo. Uh, we needed a hammer. Or we needed a spear. And, like, no one was like, yo, man, you copied my spear design, man. Like, I invented fire, dog. I'm suing you, right? No, like, we just, like, did shit because we needed to, like, live. And it was like, oh, we, uh, we made stuff in our communities for our communities and we shared and whatever. And this comes in direct collision with capitalism or the market economy where, you, you know, you exchange uh, goods and services for goods and services. And then that eventually becomes you exchange money for goods and services, right? And you have to labor to earn money to be able to exchange for goods and services, right? And when this all happens, and this is like the 17 and 1800s, right? Then we start to think about ideas as property, um, ideas as ours. And we start to not only think about that, but we also think, start to think about ourselves as individuals. So we stop to worry less about our community or our village or our tribe or whatever, and we start to think about ourselves. We start to think about what's best for ourselves. Now we're in an era where that's like hyperbolic and you know, hey, we pretty much think about ourselves. You know, like that's like, we're pretty, you know, I mean, we just lived through like, like COVID and we just saw what, you know, how people go crazy for themselves and you know we see that when, when panic comes you know anyway anyways but like that's a different idea that we aren't always like that we're more tribal and, and and more communal in so many ways right um and this is like a huge thing because we did not think about ideas and inventions as property they were community owned help the community etc and then you know capitalism perverts it. it it really does it just perverted uh, innovation and creation in so many in so many ways but you know I love the whole thing he does on memes I, I really do I think it's really important because it really gets back to what our homeboy Thomas Jefferson said about you know um, about you know me having a candle as an idea as a metaphor for an idea and me giving you light and fire from my candle does not weaken my light you know what I'm saying in fact it's now more lit in the room we now have more light we have more heat because you have fire and you have fire and and you have fire and you have fire and you have fire and we all have light you know what i'm saying and that makes us better like you know metaphorically um and imagine this like you getting sued for tiktok memes you you know getting in trouble for shit like that or the crying jordan you know meme person like sues you because you adapted that right like you know that's like weird um and like a good meme is a good meme you know and i don't know i think that's a pretty interesting thing but for a long time, we did not think of ideas as property, right? They were not ours. They were just ideas. Um, and they were good or bad, or they were helpful or not so helpful, right? In prior iterations of this film, he talks about something called loss aversion. And I like to just bring this up. You know, loss aversion is this. Uh, in the initial film, you have Steve Jobs who, who, who says, you know, Apple, you know, we, stole, we steal all the great ideas. And then he comes back 20 or 30 years later and he says, we're gonna sue the shit out of everybody. He said, we're gonna go thermonuclear on Android, you know? Um, because of this, loss aversion is this. We like to copy or borrow until we are copied from, and then we get mad or sad, right? And then in this instance, we sue or we go, you know, like crazy on people and, and stuff like that. So it feels good to copy. It doesn't feel as good sometimes to be copied. Um, but some people like myself, like find that maybe flattering, um, maybe, you know, uh, it sort of depends, you know, but there's a lot of, you know, companies and people that, that are, that are like this. It also gets into like sample trolls and patent trolls, which we'll talk about, um, later in this term. And then we get to AIs, man. And this is like, 
you know, y'all are probably gonna like, if you choose the paper option here, you're gonna chat GPT it. Uh, maybe you can get, you can do an, a cool like AI final project. Like actually I'd be kind of interested in like a critical art piece using AI in some way. Um, I think that's like kind of fascinating, right? But I think, you know, I mean, he goes through this whole thing specifically with art, right? And his whole thing is like, we know this artificial intelligence has been taking human jobs for a long time, but they've been blue collar jobs. You know, you go to the grocery store and you go to checkout and you go to self checkout. And there's, there's 10 self checkout things and one person that is running a, a cash register, you know, one human being. Automation of production and all this stuff is all artificial intelligence, all computers doing shit we used to do. And it was all blue collar stuff. And that seems fine. But then when the white collar jobs start to go, the idea jobs, the creation jobs, oh no, I'm a screenwriter and uh, someone can just go in the chat P GPT and come up with a general idea and it writes a fucking screenplay. That's actually not that bad. And then I just go in and tweak it. I mean, I've used chat GP, GPT. I go, I went in and said, you know, I gave it an idea for business and I go, write me a business plan. Now, it wasn't how exactly I want, but it wrote a pretty goddamn good business plan. I went through and tweaked it and made it how I wanted it. I'm like, man, I didn't have to spend hours trying to figure out how to really write a good business plan. It just gave me like a blueprint, right? Whatever. You know what I mean? But like, here's the thing is people are now mad because it's not just like assembly lines and it's not just factories and it's not just these like, you know, um, blue collar type jobs. It's like, oh, like the middle class is now shit. <laughs> you know, like, ah, oh, shit, man. Anyways, I think AI image and AI art is interesting and he talks about this, you know, it's like, the AIs that collect basically and study images that we create. And guess what, dumbasses? We put our art on the internet. You know, listen, and I get why we all want to share our art, but like we also put it out there in this mass database that can be absorbed by other people, in this case, AIs, you know? But I think like the process that he talks about that's problematic when it comes to copyright now. Now we know like no one can copyright AI art yet, but like judges have been pretty firm on like a computer made that, not a person. You can't ask a computer to make something for you and then you claim copyright on it, you know. That may change at some point. Um, but like this whole idea of like copying images and diffusing them and making models is where we start to run into issues of copyright protection. Now he suggests like maybe they should do this with public domain images, maybe fair use applies here, um, et cetera. But like, you know, this is, this is like the point of like, maybe that's where there's a legal issue, but that has not really been settled yet. And it's like, it's studying and, and copying things, but like, it's not, and it's borrowing your style or studying your style and combining styles and stuff like that. But like, do you really own that stuff? You know, and that becomes like the weird thing is like, you know, how do you own art? You know, how do you own great ideas and innovations and, and et cetera, right? And so I don't think that's the important thing is like artificial AI made art are more like ideas than they are like expressions of ideas, which is what we'll talk about when we talk about copyright later in, uh, in the class, right? Computers are not creative, but they create. I think that's an interesting quote from, uh, from that, right? But they're syntheses of human beings. I think that's the fascinating, like they synthesize and put together all of the creativity of humans into these like interesting ways that maybe we would never think about it. I think could be a very interesting tool or, or we could get like terminated. <laughs>